Hi guys, Ghost from Ghost Codes. I'm gonna show you guys how I do um, page URLs with uh, your own custom slug. Um, essentially, where you can have like your domain name slash the username or something like that. It's a little hacky, but you can make it possible. It'll work. Um, as far as SEO goes, might have to do some testing on it to see how it works. Uh, if it actually loads metadata dynamically or not um but from uh what i've done it works um as far as seo goes i haven't tested that so that will be on you guys to see how that works and uh um i'll just go from here so essentially what we're going to do is i'm just going to create a new app and go from uh start from the beginning and after I create the app itself, I'll give you guys the editor link and um, yeah, so. All right, so we don't need the application assistant. We're just gonna go ahead and just go and get right at it. So go to the 404 page, here we are, delete everything. Um, we're gonna start with a group. And in this group, it's gonna be our loading group because um, we're gonna want this to look good. Um, because when we do it this way, it has to have some sort of transition. It has to think for a second and then show your content. So when that happens, um, we're going to have a loading box in the way. It's not going to hide content, but the content won't be visible until the loading box is gone. So we'll go ahead and just uh, create that. Um, what's going on here? That's fixed. Don't want that. That's inside of a column get rid of this and use this key make this a max width of make it uh, 100 it's gonna be our loading box and then we'll make this one a fixed height of 400 it doesn't really matter it's just the loading box so um we just want to make things look good right so min height go away um actually i'll just make it a thousand and have something there and then we will just give this a little bit of color same thing for here we don't want to you know it doesn't really matter what i'm doing right now is not reflecting what we're doing um you can actually just skip all this go to where we need it I just am picky and I like things to look or look good. So this is going to be for you guys. I want it to look clean. So I'm going to do the loader loading content. And then I like to, I don't know about you guys. I like to use custom icons. So I'll install mine by HeroFi or the, not nah. anyways. I'll install this one. We'll get the hero icon, not the hero, but iconify icon. And I already have one ready to go. Where is it? Which icon is it? Yeah. Give it a nice little color. Uh, doesn't matter. App font, which is always open sans, which is ugly, but whatever. Spacing. You know, this is kind of like a little styling demo, too. Um, and there's that. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And now it's ready to add in the content areas. So we're going to want the 404 um, page, obviously. So we're going to do this. We're going to have this become the content container. And when the loading box right here, when the loading box is not visible, actually, we'll see. We'll see. I think, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure this is fine. Just make sure it's not visible on page load and then collapse it in. Same thing for here, um, except for it's going to be visible on page load, but collapse it in. And don't animate it. We'll take care of the animation. So we're gonna uh, 
we are going to go ahead and just give this a little bit of a styling as well. Um, max width at 300, and then just fix the fix height to content. Keep that minimum there so we can see what we're doing. So now um, we will go ahead and just add in our content that we're gonna put in there. So we're gonna want you know one box, um, which is gonna be for our 404 content. And then uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit of styling to it so we know what we're doing, see what we're doing. It'll be nice and red right there. And then we're gonna add another one in here, same box, but this one's gonna be our profile, profile content. Now, um, we have two groups in here, profile content and the 404 um, profile. We'll make that a different color so we can kind of just know. And then we'll go ahead, uh, we will go ahead and put some text in here and then we'll put some text in here and put another icon um, in here and there. Um, so now we got our icons, we have text, and then we're now we're going to want to do the basics. Um, which is how we're going to be uh, sending people or routes to this um, URL. So essentially, my example is going to be, we're going to be pulling it from the user slugs, but you can make it whatever you want. Um, it can be anything. You don't have to add the page. It can be any slug you want. Um, it can be dynamic. It can be static. It can be a user. It doesn't matter. But for my example, I will use a user. So right now we have users, we have, you know, the basic stuff. I'm just gonna add a name and the text. And then now we don't have any users. I'm gonna create one, its name is gonna be Fred and slug's gonna be Fred. Now, just so you know, you will have to set the slug manually. Um, well, not manually per se, but you won't be able to do it through the create user. You have to actually set their slug uh, through the workflow, actually. I'll show you that in a second. So we'll create a few of them. I don't see them right away. Um, slug will be Jeff. Oh, that's too much. Frank. Holly. Oh, golly. And there it is. So let's go ahead and just uh, refresh that so we know we got the data there. And as you can see, I got the slugs. So um, the slugs are what we're going to pull from. Um, and that's how we're going to determine whether or not a user is a user or the slug is a user. So um, before we get into like the transition phase, I'm just going to show you how the mechanics work. So let's go into the conditionals or the states here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new state called uh, target user. And it's going to be user. Now, when the page loads, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we check to see whether or not the slug is in fact a user. So there's two ways we can do this. We can obviously search for the slug or we can cache the data somehow or have the data cached. So let's say you have a workflow action when a user is created then it adds it to a list and then you pull from that list later on. Um, it's much easier to have a list of usernames like a actual like a JSON list or text list um, rather than actually pulling from your data itself. Otherwise, you're going to be doing that every time someone uh, loads your page and it's not going to be cached. So there's that. And then let's go ahead and just set your state. You're here of 404 target user is going to be do a search for user and the constraint is going to be uh, slug. So slug equals, and then we're going to go down to get data from page URL path as list, and it's going to be the first item in the list, first item. No. 
Now, that's only going to work, or we only want this to work when it happens. So let's just copy this expression. Uh, not when it happens, but when it's positive, like when, um, when a slug actually does exist. So now this is where pulling from an actual cached list would be helpful. Otherwise, you're going to be searching for these users every time someone uh, jumps to a page. So, um, so we're going to do account is greater than zero. So now, ideally, we already have this internal state. And the internal state, well, we have a, yeah, the internal state's the target user, and then we got the search for users first item, and it only sets the state, only puts the target user there uh, when it's available. So um, now we can basically pull our conditionals based off of that fact. Um, so in here, we're going to make it so it collapses when it's hidden and then not visible on page load. And the conditional is going to be when the 404's target user is empty, um, this element is visible. And I'm going to copy this condition and just paste it right in this one. And then is not empty for this one. And then make sure it collapses when, collapses when hidden. And then there's that. So now we're going to want to make sure that the container is visible at the appropriate time. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set the target, right? But then we're going to want to make sure that we animate the loading box and we're going to do a fade out. And then um, I believe what we can do is I can't remember how I had it set. Let me double check. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to animate the box, right? But before we do that, we're going to want to make sure everything's all set. So we're going to try to give it a little bit of delay. So let's go ahead and add a pause. And generally speaking, 1000 is pretty good. Might go to 500, we'll see. I'm going to do another one, and then we're going to animate the content uh, container. And this is going to be a fade in. Now, when we preview our page, 404. Right. That's pretty smooth. Go ahead and make this uh, look all right, just so we know what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look up an icon here. Go ahead and do it here. It might be like a clever one. All right, so I found one right here. We'll go ahead and use this one for an error. This look pretty. All right, so now that's nice and pretty. Give it a little bit of padding. Uh, there's that. Same thing on here. Now, I wish I could just copy. Uh, Copy the layout settings, but I've always had issues with this. I don't think that's, I don't think that's it. There's that, and then copy style. Right, copy style, and paste it. It just breaks. I don't know. I've never had luck with that. 
I would just do it, you know. But uh, and then this is perfect, so we'll just leave this one as the basic one. Well, um, uh, yeah, uh, user's profile. Uh, 404s, target users, name. And I think that's it. Go ahead and uh, double check our uh, slugs. So we got Holly, Frank, Jeff, and Fred. Error page. Now let's visit Holly. Oh, that's not right. So what's going on here? Okay, I figured out what it is. So, when you set up your app for the first time, obviously your privacy rules are all closed. So, you know, open up your slug, make it so people can view it. Um, your name, just put like view name, slug. Um, and I think that's perfect. Let's go ahead and go from there. Now it should work. No? Okay. Search. Find in searches. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right. I I was worried for a second, but yeah, it's it just came comes down to privacy. So you just, just got to make sure that when you do search for a slug, that it's open to the public and that people can search. Uh, this is why I did state that it would be best to create a cache list beforehand, so you don't have to worry about searching. It's just there. So, uh, hopefully this uh, gives you a little insight and some ideas on what you could possibly do with your app. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to hit me up at gh5key on Bubble. If you guys need any help, let me know.